Like, I need a, I need a bucket down the stretch. Why isn't the ball in the hands of my best player? I've seen that with every other team. Why did I not, not see it with the Boston Celtics down the stretch last night? Well, it was a broken play. Uh, you know, Pat Connaughton overran the inbounds play on that little zipper down screen. He overran it. And you know what? Marcus Smart made the right play. He ripped it and went to the baseline. Uh, you know, look, Drew Holiday, he made it a ridiculous play, getting level of the ball, making the block, saving the basketball. I mean, that's just a big-time play. And Connaughton, second effort. You talk about second effort, he got back in the play so Holiday could make the play. But look where Holiday comes from. Weak side, you see Jason Tatum. I think what was supposed to happen is Smart gets the ball. It was going to be a wide pin down, which actually – Tatum scored uh, the possession before on a wide pin down on the weak side. They never got to it because Connaughton overran the passing lane. Instinct takes over. Boom. Marcus Smart rips it and goes, thinks he's got a layup, and Drew Holiday makes a great play. But if you saw in the left-hand corner, you saw Tatum, that was a wide pin, and that was a Marcus Smart entry. You got to get the ball in bounds, and then a wide pin down for Tatum. But you know what? They never got to that point. And he made the right play, Marcus. But Drew Holiday, I mean, he made some plays, man. That absolutely are incredible. Look at look where he comes from. He gets level of the ball. He sees yeah, the play I, develop, and he just makes a great play. Hits it right in a sweet spot. The ball goes out of bounds. I see that. But, but oh. it, Seth, it brings me to another point. Another point here. So Marcus Smart inbounds the ball, end of game situation, gives it to Al Horford, gets it right back. Me and my point guard mind, I automatically go to, as before that ball even comes back to me, my head is up. I'm looking up the court. I'm seeing what's happening. As soon as that ball hits my hands, one dribble, Seth, I'm making a pass because my head has already seen what's coming towards me and what's available. And I, I know it's hard to go back and be a Monday morning quarterback and break down a play because he loses the second dribble. But why even have the second dribble to begin with? It should have been one dribble, ball right up in the pocket, kick the ball ahead to Jason Tatum. Jason Tatum has a wide open three. Yeah, he, he did, and I tell you, two, twofold. That play was designed, obviously, and Jay, well, you know, when those guys crossed and Al came up and received the basketball, he could either pitch it back and then Marcus makes a play, or he could turn and obviously find Tatum. If, if you could run that play again, look at half court because Bobby Portis takes someone out. I Bumps. think it's Wes Matthews. Absolutely yep. takes him out. We, we, you can't see it at half court, but uh, he takes it out. Al could have just turned it and pitched it up the floor. Obviously, a last-second play. Uh, that's something I'm sure they practice. Look at look at look at half court. You see someone's fall down. I think that's Matthews that falls down. Right Matthews, there. yeah, Boom, you're right. right there. All right. I mean, that's the reason that Jason Tatum was wide open. But uh, yeah, I mean, you know, Marcus Smart should have caught it. He reads the situation. You, know, you don't. We sat together enough times. You go advantage disadvantage. If you think you can get to the middle of the floor and make a play, fine. But if you see someone falling down, you got advance past the ball up the floor. Hard play to make in that time and, and situation. But, uh, you know, a play you would have liked to see made. I thought the, the play was great. I think the execution wasn't obviously what the, uh, the Celtics would have liked. But and, and make no mistake about it. Here's my, here's my complaint. Everything possible that needed to happen for, for the Bucks to win happened in the last two minutes. I mean, like, you couldn't recreate mm. those last two minutes again. And I'll tell you, things would be easier for the Bucks. And I heard you guys talking about it. Six for 34. Giannis. Uh, Gordon Chies, an old assistant coach of the Utah Jazz and college coach, used to say, shooting turnovers. Giannis, every time you shoot a three, I know you made those two threes. They're shooting turnovers. Man, you, you dominate. Mm. You punish people in the paint. Get the ball at the elbow down and punish people like only you can do. You're different than everyone else in that area. When you're shooting threes, that's a win for the defense, man. The coach, Seth Greenberg, joining us this morning on Keyshawn, J. Will, and Max. Coach, let's pivot to the other game in tonight. Tonight's game, the Philadelphia 76ers are facing elimination. What is it that Doc Rivers needs to do to not be sent home packing, not just from the playoffs, but possibly from his job? Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't comment on guys' jobs. I've been whacked too many times to comment on, on other people's jobs. But, uh, look, I mean, James Harden's got to have a flashback to back who – to who he was, because it's not who he is today. I mean, and I did a tape. I'm going to do a tape uh, for Get Up. And Look, James Harden's a very good player. But between the defensive game plan of the Heat and James Harden not being the guy he was there, like the lack of lift right there, the lack of explosiveness, all right, there's only so much he can do. This team is undermanned in relation to the depth of the Heat. The Heat's depth is absolutely wearing, wearing, Philadelphia out. If Joel Embiid is not 100% healthy, which he's not 100% healthy, 
He's the one thing. Play through him. Get him touches. He's got to dominate this game. because, And then James Harden, the game will become easier if you play through and beat early. So I'd say play through and beat early. He's got to get touch. Literally, they got to play through him every single possession in the first quarter, which is going to open up the floor for Harden to have a little bit more space where he can make a play. Because like, like the tape I'm going to show this, this morning, there's no space for Harden to play with the skill set he has now. He's a very good player. High basketball IQ, brilliant, savant in terms of understanding the game. But he's not the guy he was. So you've got to play through the guy who's the difference, and that's Embiid, and, and live and die with him. And then he opens up the floor for Max. He opens up the floor, obviously, for Tobias Harris and James Harden. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus right now.